The New South Wales opposition leader is threatening to refer revelations about a bushfire grant program to the state's anti-corruption commission after a report found Labor-held seats missed out on funding. Live to Julia Bradley in Sydney. Julia, we did hear about this in the news conference that just happened. But the opposition leader giving the Premier and former Deputy Premier 24 hours to respond. That's right, Tom. So the New South Wales Labor leader, Chris Minns, he continues to accuse the state government of pork barrelling in this saga. And this is following those bombshell revelations in that Auditor General report in New South Wales that revealed that an intervention by the office of former Deputy Premier John Barillaro resulted in electorates held by Labor MPs being denied funding under that fast-tracked first stage of that bushfire recovery grants following the Black Summer bushfires. So this intervention from Mr Barillaro's office saw a $1 million threshold being put in place for projects. And this meant that projects worth less than that were then deemed ineligible for funding. The report noting that all of the shortlisted projects in Labor-held electorates were denied funding. And that is without a rationale being given, being documented at the time. So this meant that some projects in hard-hit parts of New South Wales, including in the Blue mountains and in tenderfields were overlooked. Now, Chris Minns has said that there are more questions for Mr Barillaro to answer, but also more questions for Dominic Perrottet to answer, given that he was treasurer at the time, as you say, giving them 24 hours to provide more information, or he says he's referring this to ICAC. We want to hear from the New South Wales Deputy Premier. There needs to be an explanation. If there isn't, by the end of the day, we will refer it to the ICAC. And I think that the New South Wales Premier should consider doing it as well. Uh, we cannot have a situation where an independent report is written by the Auditor General and then it just disappears from view as if it was never written in the first place. There needs to be action. We cannot have a situation where the politicisation of disasters in this state becomes the norm. We have to stamp it out right now. Now, one of the electorates that was also denied funding under this fast-track first stage of this grant program was the electorate of Bega, and that was held by former Liberal MP Andrew Constance, and he spoke about this saga this morning. The fact that the department itself, in terms of regional New South Wales, uh, doesn't seem to have uh, much paperwork around this, um, you know, and that's been cited in this report, I just think there's a, a necessary requirement for someone to give an answer today. So important to note that this report also did make reference to the fact that the hardest hit areas were in uh, regions that were held by coalition MPs. The Department of Regional New South Wales also telling the auditor in this report that some of the projects that were excluded because of that threshold introduced by Mr Barillaro's office later were funded under subsequent programs. As you said before, Tom, we did hear a little bit more on this from the New South Wales Premier and also the Prime Minister in that news conference conference following National Cabinet with Mr Albanese saying, well, I think that disaster relief should be distributed on the basis of need. That's my starting point and quite clearly it shouldn't be politicised. Dominic Perrottet saying that he made changes in New South Wales when he became Premier in relation to grants allocations. Now, in terms of the uh, campaign, just 50 days until the New South Wales election, Labor has been out talking up its commitment to recruit 600 new firefighters over the next eight years. And this comes ahead of what could be a dangerous bushfire season next summer. Julia, thank you. It's sure to be a big political issue.